K-pop, squid games, and face masks by the crate. South Korean culture is global and skin care exports are booming. Elise Hugh is the author of a new book called Flawless, Lessons in Looks and Culture from the K-Beauty Capital. It is a deep dive into some ugly realities about beauty ideals. And she's my guest this week on the Dying Desk podcast. At least it seems like um, everywhere we go these days, there is so much Korean culture that we are drawn to, whether it's Squid Games on TV or music wise, it's BTS. And certainly beauty has infused into our lives in a huge way. Six out of 10 of all Netflix subscribers in the world have watched some sort of Korean content. When it comes to Korean beauty, Korea is now exporting more cosmetics and skincare and skincare tools than it exports in smartphones. So it's rather Which is astounding. Shocking. Yeah, it's astounding how much it's grown just over the last five to 10 years. Your new book, Flawless, looks at some of the lessons that we can take, especially from the beauty industry. Um, but there's also like a real warning for how we look at ourselves. The technological gaze is a machine driven perspective. So we're all used to the term the male gaze, which is how women internalize how we're supposed to look for men. The technological gaze is a bit deeper and more insidious in that it's how we learn or internalize how we're supposed to look for algorithms or um, for each other when it comes to our friends that see us on social media. Why is the impact traced so specifically to Korean beauty culture? Because Korea was first. Um, Korea is, in so many ways was really recognizing not only the IT infrastructure that was necessary to just pump visuals, you know, and, and streaming content really fast all the time in a ubiquitous way, but also the other kind of technology, which is the technology of self-improvement. So how to upgrade our bodies. South Korea is the most advanced and the most saturated plastic surgery market in the world. Um, four times more plastic surgeons per capita than the United States. It has so many more offerings when it comes to neurotoxins. So injectables like Botox, mm -hmm. um, injectables like filler. And so it's really kind of on the cutting edge or the bleeding edge of what's happening next to our bodies and how we can upgrade our bodies or shift them. So this idea that our bodies are malleable and that we can drastically change our appearance is something that South Korea is, I would say, at least half a decade, if not a full decade ahead of the rest of the world on. I was stunned reading your book to think about certain trends or products that I get targeted with on Instagram like 24-7. Oh I was gosh. stunned at how they traced right back to Korean beauty culture. Yeah, so if you think about foot peels, the pimple patches that you can kind of, the invisible pimple patches that you can stick on, glowy skin, glass skin, dewy skin, um, sheet masks, all of these ideas, the multiple steps of a skincare routine beyond just washing our face and moisturizing, um, the attention that we pay to sunscreen, a lot of that are really rooted in Korean beauty products and Korean beauty practices. Check out the rest of my conversation with Elise Hugh on this week's Dying to Ask podcast. You can scan the QR code there for a link to the episode or search Dying to Ask wherever you listen to podcasts. Your algorithm must just be jam packed, <laughs> especially after researching this story. It definitely is after this. Actually, it's an excellent point. <laughs> and to find out, you know, like just the, the impact these algorithms have had on like the way we look at each other, yeah. the way we look at ourselves, it's kind of horrifying, really. Yeah, it's social media. Mm -hmm. It's all come a long way. All right.